So many of you may not know this, but outside of making YouTube videos and doing just general guitar and music related stuff, one of my main hobbies is engineering, building and designing things and getting to put them together. It's one of my favorite things to do. And prior to this project, I never had really gotten a chance to fuse those together with music. I had gotten into it a little bit when I built my own pedal board, done all the wiring and design for that, but I believe the ultimate kind of culmination of being able to put music and engineering engineering together is building your own guitar. And about a month ago, I finally got the time, resources, money, everything to be able to do that. And I'm super happy with the results and I'd love to show you guys how it came out. So this parts caster telly is a mix and match of a ton of different parts as you might expect. The first part of the build to arrive for assembly was the neck on November 15th. It was listed as a nitro finish T-style neck from Real Life Relics, and it is a 22 fret neck with medium jumbo nickel frets and a modern 12 inch radius. It's aged pretty heavily and I have to commend Real Life Relics for their job on a $150 neck. The rolled fretboard edges are some of the nicest I've ever felt and the nitro on the back is well worn, matte, and it just feels perfect on the hands. It came with Relic tuners sold as 14 to 1 sealed die cast tuners, a nut, and dual string trees already installed, saving some nice money in hardware purchases. I do enjoy the modern touches on the neck like the 12 inch radius, modern style tuners, and most importantly the nut adjust instead of the heel adjust for the truss rod, and it also keeps the appearance of the vintage Telecaster it was intended to emulate. The body was the next part to show up, arriving the next day on November 16th. The body, also finished by Real Life Relics, is a genuine Fender Telecaster alder body in candy apple red. It's important to note that this body is not finished in nitrocellulose. It is a polyurethane relic using the stock fender red finish as its base and adding relic touches from there. It's moderately worn, similar to the neck, and has many nicks and some very nicely done armwear. I was impressed with the quality of the relic, honestly. It was exactly what I was looking for in this build. In the spirit of being crafty and creative, I relicked my own neck plate. I had this Fender Custom Shop plate left over, the original from my Strat, and kicked it around outside for a bit to get it really scratched up. I then submerged it in a very weak solution of hydrochloric acid for a few hours and got some subtle tarnishing around the edges and text on the plate. I completed the same process with the strap buttons I had on hand, and while likely it was not the most realistic relic, it saved me a fair amount of money, it was a cool learning experience, and it just plain out looks cool. However, anyone who has ever built a parts caster knows that there are always fit and finish issues and this build was indeed no exception. Upon first attempted fitment of the neck and body, the neck would not fit into the pocket no matter what. I'm still not quite sure for the reasoning behind this other than different manufacturer tolerances as both body and neck were designed for the standard 2 and 3 16 vendor pocket. Before moving forward we decided that modifying the neck was the best bet as it was significantly cheaper to replace in case of a catastrophic error. The ultimate solution to this issue was to carefully sand the sides of the neck heel where the pocket rubbed until the neck, albeit very tightly, fit into the body pocket. This alleviated the first of two major issues with this build. The bridge was then next to arrive on November 17th. This is a Wilkinson licensed chrome Telecaster ashtray bridge with brass compensated saddles. I have to admit I had extraordinarily low expectations for this bridge for roughly $28, but I was absolutely blown away. I can genuinely say that the simulated wear on the bridge is some of the most authentic on the entire guitar, and it sits straight and true on the body with no adjustment or manipulation. The compensated saddles intonate extraordinarily well and the degraded finish on the screws was a very nice touch. I had zero issues with fitment or anything related to the bridge, which was absolutely great. Pickups arrived on November 18th, which was nice as it made me feel like I was making some semblance of progress on the guitar. Pickguard screws also arrived, but I was not able to do anything with those considering I did not have a pickguard on hand yet. I chose a Lawler Vintage T set for the pickups, which I do not regret at all. These arrived near instantly from Chicago Music Exchange and were a direct, easy install into the guitar. As you've heard and will hear, these sound crazy good. I've never had any pickups that sound as authentic, growly, rich, and as full as these do. One of my goals in building this guitar was to achieve the stereotypical Tele bridge tone, and this set blew that expectation out of the water, no questions asked. 
The output jack, pick guard, and string ferrules, all aged by real life relics, came in on November 23rd. These were really well done as I had come to expect and gave me a better idea for what the guitar would finally look like since I had most of the finishing touches. However, the smooth sailing then briefly stopped again after the arrival of the pickups. A few days earlier I decided to string the guitar up to address any playability or setup issues so I could focus on the electronics work when the rest of the parts arrived. To my dismay, I found that I could not even get the strings off the frets with the bridge saddles absolutely maxed out. I had already partially feared this as eyeball comparison to other guitars in my collection seemed to point to the neck sitting very high in the pocket. My father and I eventually settled on the plan of planing nearly an eighth of an inch off the neck heel to get it to sit lower in the pocket. Although a hair raising process, we planed the neck heel successfully and got the neck to fit in the pocket exactly how it should have in the first place. Around the time we finished planing the heel on November 24th, the hardware and wiring kit from Wainwright Custom Guitars arrived. The kit was very well put together with adequate diagramming and the hardware was very, very well reliced. This telly is wired in the standard three-way configurations with no extra positions, knobs, or switches. I personally prefer the classic style with no extra modifications regarding electronics. I'm glad to say this guitar surpassed my expectations in every way, it plays like a dream, sounds incredible, and was well worth the money and wait for the parts. I look forward to playing it for many years to come and writing some incredible music with it. Thank you guys yet again for watching and remember to interact with the channel in whatever way you choose to do so and have a great day.